<laughs> buenos dias, good afternoon, and buenos noches. Whatever it may be for you, I hope it's absolutely blessed. Welcome back, folks. Take a big breath, sit down, and relax. Because you did it, folks. You made it back to the listeners. So congratulations. And on today's show, part two, interview with Pastor Pete. And on this show, we get into a good conversation about the gifts of the Spirit. Enjoy the show, folks. This is The Listeners. And remember, to hit that thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and let's go, folks. Let's get into the show. The Listeners with special guest, Pastor Pete. Right, you know. Uh, speaking of healing, you know, like uh, the gifts, I, you, like tongues, mm-hmm. healing. Do you think that stuff exists today? Like healing, like someone someone um, has the power to heal somebody. I, I do, but not in the in the context of uh, as we see some of these uh, preachers who over exaggerated, if you will, and yeah. shake their jackets at waves of people and. Yeah. You know, that's all they were doing. I mean, because, you know, if they got that that gift, they should be down at St. Jude's Hospital yeah. where the kids are. That would make sense you know? to me, right? But I believe that, the you know, if you, you got to remember the gifts. If you throw away one gift, you got to throw them all away. Uh, meaning? Uh, uh, got the gift of knowledge. You got the gift of tongues. You got the gift of okay. prophecy. You got, you know what I mean? And, yeah. And so um, you got to, uh, you can't just pick and choose. Which one you, you know, want. Right. You know, and we're, yeah. we're going to get to that later because we're going through the book of Corinthians on Sundays, you know, oh, awesome. when we hit chapter 12, you know, we're going to spend some time yeah. in that because, you know, but the gifts got to be operating the proper way. If you think about the Corinthian church, you know, they had, I mean, we've been going through the chapters here, five, six, and seven, That's there's right. a lot of jacked yeah. up stuff that was in their church. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But they also had the gifts and some of it, it wasn't being operated properly, but they had it all, you know, that, that yeah. to me is like, Wow. I mean, a lot of people downplay Corinthians like, oh, you're jacked up. And the dude was sleeping with his mom, you know, and all that <laughs> yeah. other stuff. Yeah. But they also had all these gifts. They had them all, you know. And so um, I think uh, I think that that's still operating today. Um, I just don't think it's through one particular man or person as far as that goes. Mm-hmm. Um, and the aspects that, uh, uh, you know, it says to – to, to get the elders and to have the elders pray over and lay hands. And why do they have elders in plural? Hmm. Because that way, if multiple people pray over someone and God decides to heal them, then God gets all the glory. Amen. That's true. Yeah. Not just one person that's shaking his jacket at you. Because that's kind of, you yeah. know, the way people are. If, if there was a guy out here healing people, mm-hmm. they would forget about the Lord and just think this is the guy who, who's the healer, right? right? And, and when you study the Bible, you think about it, healings don't bring salvation. That's true. Worship doesn't bring salvation. That's right. How much money you put in the offering doesn't bring salvation. It's the word of God. That's it. That brings yes. salvation. Yes. And so, you know, and all those prophecy and all those other things, I mean, they're great. Sure. And I mean, and I'm the type of guy that, you know, like I said, when I used to pray, I used to say, Lord, I want all the gifts and any bonus ones. You know, because I was being selfish, if you will. But I, I didn't want to deny God by saying, because there's some to go, oh, that was dispensational and there's no more tongues. They've ceased, you know, whatever. And, you know, I have the gift of tongues. I have a prayer language that I have with oh, God. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't do it out loud because I haven't had an interpreter come along yet. Yeah. But I have a prayer language with God. That's just me and him, you know. and That you use often, like between you and the Lord? Or, I, I or do. Just, I, I, I pray. Like it yeah. just happens while you're praying? or, or um, like, Yeah. Yeah. Or I can, I, you know, I can pray it when I wow. want to pray it. Well, yes. That's awesome. I have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, I think that the dialect is probably something that's maybe in the Middle East. I think maybe. Oh, wow. I don't know. Wow. But, uh, and I don't have like, you know, a, a whole vocabulary of pages of words but yeah. i have a certain thing that i know 
that's from him. How would you know if you had an interpreter? That's a great question. You know, so I think of my wife when she was in Kentucky, she told me of a church she went to. Mm -hmm. And I've heard some of the stories of some of other Calvary pastors where they have like an afterglow after church. Mm -hmm. and yeah. And so, um, so they'll be there praying and worshiping and someone will say, and so the one that she went to, and hopefully I'm telling the story right. If not, she'll correct me later <laughs> that I got it wrong. But for what I remember off memory is that she, they would be praying and, and someone would speak in tongues. Wow. And the pastor would say, okay, that was the gift of tongues. We're going to see if we have interpretation. Hmm. So everybody was kind of worshiping. It wasn't a search. It was like an afterglow. Yeah. And then someone would get up and they would say, thus says the Lord. And it would be something that would edify the whole church. And it was being done the way the Bible says, you wow. know, because it says if you ain't got no interpreter, be quiet. It's better to be silent. Yeah. It's better to say four or five words that somebody understands than to speak 10,000 that someone doesn't understand because then a stranger walks in off the street, paraphrased, and yeah. thinks everybody's crazy, you yeah. know? And so there's yeah. some out there that that's what they do. They take, they do it out of context and someone, you know, you yeah. walk in the church and everybody's speaking in tongues and <laughs> yeah. it's like during the service, you know, and it's like, right. oh, wait a minute, that's not what it says. So... How would you handle it if, you know, you're preaching and all of a sudden someone stands up and starts, I guess it would be kind of interrupting you, but doing tongues, how would you um, handle that situation? You know, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't know, you know, cause one yeah. thing I know that, that if God's going to do that in, in, in a service, sure. one, God's not going to interrupt himself. I would. Yeah. The Bible says sense. everything's done decently in order. And so. Whenever you see something that someone does that's, let's say, interrupting a service, if yeah. you will, yeah. you have to see, are they doing it to draw attention to themselves? Yeah. Or are they doing it because that's what God is having them do? Yeah. I, you know, I tell the funny story of how I first got introduced to the gift of tongues. So like I said, I'd visit other churches and I would pray. Yeah. And so I'm at this church and I go forward, you know, because anybody want gifts, come forward. You know, God wants to bless you. All right. So I went up there. I was a single guy back then. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm up there at the front and the older lady comes up and she says, the Lord wants to give you the gift of tongues today. And I go, <laughs> really? So I'm like, I'm, I'm amazed because I didn't know much back then. I'm like, wow, God told her. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she says, okay, you're just going to start speaking. You won't know what you're saying. It's going to feel like a, like a propeller of a plane. Okay. And then she lifts my shirt up. What? And starts rubbing my belly <laughs> like a propeller of a plane. And so I had to slap her hand and get away from me, you cougar. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I fled and ran the church like Joseph. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was pretty wild. I had never heard that before. Oh, yeah. That's that was pretty crazy, crazy, bro. Story. So, so I didn't pray for the gift of tongues. She lifted your shirt up? She lifted my shirt up in the yeah, in front of this pulpit in the stage, you know, and there and it was like oh, wow. rubbing on my belly, man. And I was like, Get how away. is that giving you the gift of tongues? I bro? have no idea, brother, but I just thought this is weird, man. And I didn't have a lot of discernment back then, but I had enough to get the heck out of that church. I would be humiliated. Oh, dude, oh, I, was, my. I was, I was wow. like, like, you know, I mean, you walked up to the front. Yes. Right? Yeah. And I mean, and, you know, there wasn't, there, there wasn't much belly to rub back yeah, then, you yeah, know, yeah. I was a little more fit and a little more thin back then, but still, oh, wow. was, yeah, you hear me up in lines, you know what I mean? And this yeah. old cougars up there trying to wow. rub my belly. <laughs> oh my. I wonder who taught her that trick. I don't know, bro, but wow, they needed to get her off the prayer team, you know? Wow. <laughs> It was pretty wild, man. Uh, I'd so, be like, what's so, going on here? So oh, I'll, I'll tell you. So later yeah. visiting a different church. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember we went there and, and, and me and Carla were, uh, I can't remember if we were engaged or we were already married. But anyways, we used to go visit churches and stuff like midweeks and stuff. Part of our, when we were, when we were uh, courting each other, if you will. And so mm -hmm. we were at this church and they were probably a little more Pentecostalish. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, uh, we were there and, and I remember she was sick with like a cold and so she went up for prayer. And so I went up there and, and again, anytime I visit the churches, I would always be praying, Lord, any gifts you want to give me, Lord, I'm open for many bonus ones. I want yeah, them, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, I just went up kind of support for her, I guess, next to her, but I was up there and, you know, the guy was going down the road praying for people, you know, and he yeah. prayed for her and he went down about three people and he turned around and he came back to me and he said, the Lord wants to give you the gift, a gift tonight. And mm -hmm. I was immediately, you know, I go, really? And he's all, the Lord wants to give you the gift of tongues. And I like, immediately grab my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, really? Oh, <laughs> you know, and I was watching where his hands were. Yeah. First of all. <laughs> 
from the shell shock before, but it had been many years now. <laughs> so anyways, oh, man. I was like, all right. And, yeah. and he kind of said the same thing. He said, you know, you got to kind of have faith and you just got to speak. And um, so I did get the gift of Wow. That, that night, you know, just a few words in the beginning, like there that night, uh -huh. like kind of on the spot. Uh -huh. Wow. It just happened. Like it just, he just kind of prayed over for me and he just said, you know, you, you know, he said, one thing he said, he said, the enemy's going to whisper in your ear that you don't know what you're talking about and shut huh. up. You and know did he? Mean? And he said, yeah. Wow. And, you know, cause you, you know, you don't know what you're saying. You know what I mean? You yeah. don't understand it and I don't understand it. And, uh, but, uh, I started saying a few words hmm. And I'll just say it's it's grown into a few more words than that wow. over time. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, anything from God is amazing. You know, I'll, I'll you say know. something about Carla's aunt. She's got an aunt out in Missouri. And uh, one time in this kitchen right here, we were all here. And it was uh, my mother-in-law and two of her sisters. And they're all Christians, love the Lord for many years. And, and so Aunt Pervalu prayed. And she kind of like sang in tongues, I guess you could say, and hmm. prayed. I got to say, it was one of the most beautiful prayers really, that I ever got to experience because I never heard, heard anything like that. But it was right here in our kitchen. We weren't in church, you know what I mean? And it was awesome. I mean, she was like, you, you could feel some power behind them prayers. And like, you know, did she, it, um, like, uh, she just started doing it? Well, she started praying like in English, you know what I mean? And then, and then she went, went to Latin wow. and then she went to, no, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> she went, she's praying in English and then she just kind of rolled into the tongue. Wow. But, it, but it was it was like a, f almost like a form of worship. Yeah. Like, like it was beautiful. Like, like you could tell that she knew the gift well and yeah. had probably exercised it many years in her life. And, yeah. And it was just really cool. And wow. I was like, and at first, you know, cause there's a hesitation in a lot of people who don't understand something they don't understand. Sure. And then there's a lot of people out there that, it, that put up the taboo of, you know, Oh, that's gone. And you know, she should yeah. shut up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so if you believe all the hype, yeah, you know, you got to go back to what the word says, you know what I mean? Yeah. But also I think that a lot of people get, um, they stifle the gifts before they ever even get attempt to yeah. welcome them. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, um, you know, sometimes I'm just blown away by the gifts and I've never spoken tongues, but I've never thought, uh, well, that's only for back then, not for now, you know? Right. Because that doesn't make sense. Why would it only be for back then? Right. It doesn't say to right. stop right you know and a lot of misconception is so people say well you're not baptized in the holy spirit unless you speak in tongues well that's <laughs> wrong because yeah. paul said not all speak in tongues you know what that's I mean? right and so you know and and so it's it's just taken out of context yeah absolutely so. uh, another one that I, I i find a um i think that people use a lot you know for for show if you will to and I hate to say this, but it just comes off as they're trying to be holier than thou. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's dream interpreting. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I I have a little bit of a problem with it because mm -hmm. uh, the people I've run across, they uh, haven't been Christians for very long. Right. And it's like they just want to be no more than you kind of, or they put a lot of stock in it. Yeah. Like, uh, <coughs> well, God me. told me this through my dream, like his own dream. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, what is your thoughts on that? So me personally, um, I don't put a lot of stock in dreams. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had people before give me the books on, Oh, this is the way you interpret your dreams from God. Yeah. And I've met people like you're talking about that, that very thing you just said there, they're not, you can tell they're not very, um, they're not very studious in God's word. So they're not a student of God's word, but yet they have all these dreams. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's exactly. And they it. really glorify these dreams and like, you know, yeah. like, kind of wild, you know? And so, and they'll have so many in a row. It's just, oh yeah. And know. then pretty soon it's like, they're interpreting their own dreams of what God told them their dreams were. Right. And it's a kind of like goes back to like what I said earlier is, is, when someone's doing something that's putting the tension on self, you yeah. got to check the motive and see, is this from God or is this from them? Um, yeah. So over the years, I've, I've had many people come up to me with the dream thing. Um, and I just personally, I, I don't put a lot of stock in dreams. The Bible says that old men will have visions and young men will have dreams. 
So if I still get a dream once in a while, I'm like, yay, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I'm getting older, right? Yeah. But uh, I personally have had some dreams that I know that were straight from the Lord. Yeah. Um, because they were so vivid. They were so um, wild, if you will, some of them. Yeah. To where it's like, there's no way, you know. And so I'll share them with my wife. And there's been some times where she like interprets something off of the dream, like, what about this? You know, but, but I, I don't go and like put it write it down as like, this is God's word. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I meditate on it and say law on some of them. Um, but uh, no, I'm not a big dreamer as far as uh, putting a lot of stock in it. Okay. And, and um, Joseph was the big dream interpreter in the Bible, right? Yes, he was. And he never interpreted his own dreams, correct? It was usually like. Well, I think he did the one with it. Remember he said to his brothers that, you know, all the, all the stocks are going to lay down. And that was his dream. And that, and oh, yeah, yeah. And that was his dream to his brothers that, and even his father, that, that you're all going to be bowing down to me someday. And, and that's actually how they found out he was a dream interpreter. Right. right? And remember, oh, remember yeah. before, oh, they, yeah. before they threw true. him in the pit, they said, you dreamer, <laughs> what yeah. do you want? <laughs> yeah. you know, they even called him the dreamer, you know? Yeah, that's right. And then they were going to kill him. Yeah. You know? But instead they, they tossed him in the well and they sold him the Ishmaelites. And that was all part of God's plan. And then, you know what? He goes to the jail and then Potiphar's wife, right? Yeah. You know, she yeah. wants, wants him and he runs. And then he has the dreams of the baker and the butler, right? That's right. <laughs> you know, and yeah. so, and they forgot about him, you know? Yeah. But then the one guy goes, oh, I remember, you know, I repent this day, of, you know? And, he, That's and, right. and then boom, he goes her. And then what? The Pharaoh or the king has yeah. the dreams. And then he's... All the magicians and all the sorcerers can't <laughs> yeah, interpret it, but he comes true. in there and says it's going to be a famine, wow. seven years of plenty and seven years of, you know, little. Yeah. And so he put him in charge of everything, and look what <laughs> happened, you know. That's so, right. so you know, when you know there's dreams like that, because think about it, he has a dream. That guy has a dream, and he yeah. says, "I'm not telling you guys anything about the dream. I want to interpret it, and if you don't tell me, I'm killing you." Mm. <laughs> so all the sorcerers and the magicians and the astrologers and all the guys yeah. are like, oh, no. Like, I think I would have tried to make something up. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And Joseph comes in there and hears it and says, thus says the Lord, man, boom. And he throws it down. And it's like. And it's amazing they believed him, right? Because he could have said anything he wanted. Sure. That's when. I, see, you just know when God's involved, even those people who were mm -hmm. in um, Christians believed him on, on his right. interpretation and not the sorcerers right so uh I f you just know i think like yeah i mean and then look at how joseph's life ended up i mean like he the first dream that he interpreted which was his own yeah later on at the end when he kind of toyed and played with his brothers a little bit yeah you know and tricked <laughs> him into getting bringing reuben back and stuff yeah. you know and or benjamin and uh <clears throat> and then eventually he wept on their necks and said it's me you know what i mean <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool yeah it's one of my Favorite, favorite stories yeah it's yeah. a good one yeah it's a really good one uh yeah so that was my thoughts on the the gifts my questions yeah yeah you. so yeah. And some of that yeah it's it's uh you know and and i don't even think dreams are really mentioned in the gifts part of i don't believe it is people no. just assume you know, there, there's there's some there's some passages in scriptures where they, you know some people had some dreams but but it was some of those were for like you said, like Joseph was yeah. at that time. Yeah, right. You know? I, yeah. I don't know. And yeah, it, so that's that because uh, I've come across this recently <laughs> with yeah. this dream stuff. And I just, uh, I tried howling them. You know, yeah. I just don't feel it. <laughs> Let's right. focus on the word of the Lord first before you even start interpreting anything yes because you know, you know go you to can, church even you can go down some bunny trails man that yeah. that maybe was inspired by a different god and not the god of the bible right because yeah. satan can can fool you too if you if, can i you mean know. i don't know how you, i don't know on the dream thing but you know i'm sure yeah. he's i always think of this remember remember when jesus was tempted and always yeah. in the wilderness yeah they list three but in one of the gospel i want to say it's luke i'm not positive on that but it says that Satan left for an opportune time. Oh, so yeah. So he left Jesus. Oh, yeah. So in other words, he was watching him even after he left. Like, all right, I didn't get him with the pinnacle and I didn't get him with the bread and the stones. And so yeah. he was looking for that next opportune time. Did Satan really think he could tempt him? Like, did he truly believe he that did. he was going to get him, him to? the pinnacle. I mean, that's said, crazy. If you worship me, I'll give you all this. 
I bet inside Jesus was laughing like, I made all this. You know? <laughs> right. You know, I even made you. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, you're offering me something that I made. Right? Yeah. You know. Do you believe the devil is just as much alive today as he was then? I think he's more alive yeah, right now. I think to so, too. I think uh, um, I'm reading an interesting book right now, and I don't want to really touch on it yet because I haven't read enough. But mm -hmm. uh yeah, I think uh, he's alive and well. I was talking to someone just recently about this, about I was sharing with this youngster and saying back in my day, like the Satanists that were like in heavy metal bands and other stuff, yeah. they hid everything. Right. Everything was hidden. Right. You know? Yeah, that's true. Today, they're just flaunting it out there, as, like right in your as face. As if it's normal. You know, yeah. they're throwing up different signs and, and just... It's just out there in your face and like Satan doesn't care no more. He's like, but think about it. Swayed our school system. Mm, yeah. A lot of our government. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, there's more influence right now, demonically, I think. Yeah. From the top down yeah. into our military, into our schools, into our courtrooms, into yeah. the list just goes on and on. And uh, he's busy. Yeah very busy which tells us as christians that we need to be more busy that's about right our father's business that's right you can't get caught up in the hype of all the evil that's going on because evil has always been here always right? and the bible says you know in the last days like the days of noah yeah well you know it was no walk in the park no that's true you yeah. know i mean Noah's yeah. was building that ship for a long time and everybody was mocking him and eight people climbed in that baby with the animals mm. and god shut the door mm. and then you know, all the conspiracy theorists. I know, right? <laughs> I guess he like, would be the rain? first conspiracy theorist. What's <laughs> rain? <laughs> you know? And so, Water from the sky, what? Yeah. yeah, and so, you know, you think about probably those, you know, so if there was never no water, probably most of those people didn't know how to swim. Well, the, the, I don't know. There might have been some lakes around. Yeah, you know, sure. So, so maybe, but I'm sure they couldn't tread water for 40 days. <laughs> no way. So you think about it in that picture, was there some knocking going on the wood? Oh, I bet there was. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, I, I've thought of that just because I'm like, a visual guy. Me, right. Like, like, you know, I was yeah. mocking you when you were building this thing for like the last 60 years. But wow. I really wish I could get in right now. You know, but it's too late. Maybe, maybe <laughs> some were hanging from a tree limb or something yeah. for a while. But, you know, you, even at the top of the mountains would only last them so long. You know? True. And I, then it's like, what are you going to eat? 40 days in <laughs> right. the water. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. hoping a fish comes by. <laughs> wow. <That's> Sushi. Just... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we're living in some times right now. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt that the enemy is just out there, but no man knows the hour of the day. That's right. But uh, it seems like Satan is very busy right now. We should keep the uh, gospel armor pretty close, huh? <laughs> Yes, we should, we should be wearing full, it, huh? <laughs> the full armor of God and and keep evangelizing and preaching and yeah and sharing God's word and dropping tracks. I'm a track full, you know. Oh, what I mean, man. I just love yeah. love yeah. evangelizing, and it's true. He really does. <laughs> I've seen it with my own eyes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, you know, prayer warriors is yes. what we need to be always. Like without prayer. Without prayer, we got nothing. I mean, Jesus yeah. said, my father's house would be a house of prayer. Yeah. He didn't say it'd be a house of worship. He didn't say it'd be a house of cards. He didn't yeah. say it'd be a house of goods to mm. sell. He yeah. turned over the tables because That's of that. Right. Right. You know, he yeah. didn't say it was going to be a house of flash and cash or five offerings or right, right. all these other things and crazy things that some of these, uh, you know, you can go on YouTube and see some wild things that some places do, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> yeah. and you, you know, as you study and read. And so he said, it'll be a house of prayer. Amen. You know, and one thing I think about how Purpose of Heart Ministries, when we got birth and we got our building, is that uh, I went to Vince and said, hey, bro, this is the, the prayer that God answered. And uh, let's go plant a church. And I remember Vince said, God answered your prayer. Dude. He <laughs> goes, but, he, you know, he goes, I, you know, you heard from God. I didn't hear nothing. Yeah. You know, I didn't have no prayer to God. And I was like, wow, I didn't think about that. And that, so then I countered it. I'm like, well, tell you what, I got my eye on this building. Why don't we go meet at 5 30 in the morning, get a Starbucks, and let's go hang on some rod iron gates. Yeah. And he said, you know what? And Vince, you know, my brother Vince Castellucci, man, I love this guy. Love you, bro. Anyways, <laughs> um, you know, he, he took me up on that and said, you know, I, all the years in ministry, I've never done anything like that. 
And so we went consistently, man, almost every Wednesday. Yeah. You know, there's a few we missed that first year, but we were hanging on them gates. And I remember a couple of times that big chain with the locks around them gates, it's still there today. And yeah. One day we're praying, and it's like I saw the lock before we started praying. When I got done, it was popped open. I said, Dude, look, the lock's open. And he's like, No, it was already open, bro. And I was like, All right. So then one yeah. time we were praying later on, the lock, and I remember we went up to pray because we'd always just, a lot of times it was just, it was just me and him that first year. Yeah. Yeah. And he grabbed the lock and he chugged on it, you know, and he, he pulled on it. And then we prayed, and we used to hold the fence. Like, and it was locked, even was, after he pulled on it. It was locked. Locked. Okay. We both saw that it was locked. Yeah. And so we'd hold on to the gates like we're like prisoners or something trying to get out, but actually trying to get in. And uh, and we prayed. And we got done. And he goes, dude, look. Get out of here. And that baby was opened. And That's I was amazing. Like, and I was like, uh-huh. Uh, see, uh, God's doing something. You know, not that we were looking for signs or wonders. No, no, no. But there was little things that God did. Yeah. Absolutely. That he was letting us know that he was drawing us to start this ministry up. You know? it, and that would. And God had to convince him. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. I mean, he loved me as a brother and sure. we had that kinship and all that stuff, but it's like he had to know for him and his family that yeah. God called him to be a part of this. Yeah. And so what's cool is we still go pray on Wednesdays. That's awesome. To this day. To this day. We pray. We pray at Dunkin' that, Donuts now. And uh, that's like six uh, years ago, right? That you yeah, well, it's about, about five and a half right five now. Five and a half. Uh, wow. Maybe six. Yeah. And so we, and we actually, the group of us that go, we look forward to that prayer. Yeah. You know what I mean? I look forward to those Wednesday mornings. Yeah. We've had some good times there. Amen. And I, I, until the Lord tells me to stop, I'm, we're going to keep doing it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Uh, well, Pastor Pete, we had a pretty good show here. Okay. This is uh, the Listening's One Year Show. Yes. Thank and, you, Jesus, uh, for uh, yes. this podcast and this, uh, you know, way of, of using technology for God's glory. Thank Amen. you, Nathaniel, for the effort that you put in, because I know you you burned the, the midnight oil doing it and put in this production every week so that people can see this. So tell mm -hmm. a friend, tell somebody to tune in yes. to the listenings.com and check it out or go to our website, mypohm.com and, yep. and tell someone, man, cause it's cool. It is cool. I enjoy it. Um, and God's working. Amen. God's working. He's always working no matter what. He is. He is man. And it's been cool to see other pastors come on here and missionaries and such. And, you know, this isn't just all about purpose of heart. We've used this venue, this, podcast to plug other churches other ministries and yeah. stuff that's what it's about it's not just about us man it's about that's the right. kingdom amen and so we're gonna have other uh guests coming on that are gonna plug other stuff you know but we're gonna also do some stuff with the word of god and tonight was fun amen yeah it was a blast yeah um do you have any last words you'd like to say to uh whoever's listening out there you know i would say uh have a thirst and hunger for god's word more so Amen. than you have in, in, in your life before Amen. or life right now. Study yeah. God's word. Don't just read it. Study it. Learn how to study it. If your prayer life isn't that great, start making it a better one. Yeah. You know, my wife has a war room here in this house and my wife spends hours and hours in there praying. Wow. And I mean, and, and, you know, I know I'm on the list and she's probably got a couple pages of, for me, you know, <laughs> yeah. she probably needs a couple pages for me. And, uh, but she does, she has systematic things that she prays for. And so, man, if your prayer life isn't that great, if you're just praying over your meals or yeah. Lord bless this day in Jesus name, amen. And that's it. And that's the last time God hears from you for the day. Then you need to up your game on yeah. your prayer life. Amen. God wants specifics. He wants us to be direct in our prayers hmm. and guys, we need more evangelists out there. Get some gospel tracks and drop them. He says, if you give a cold glass of water in the name of a disciple, you'll be blessed. Can mm. you buy a gold glass of bottled water and just hand it to somebody and tell them Jesus loves you? You know, yeah. have compassion for the lost, you know. And, uh, you know, I'll say this also. There's been a lot of people out there that have been hurt by church. Okay. Yeah. And that's a sad thing. Yeah. There's a lot of people who got caught up in the COVID thing of yeah. not going to church. Yeah. And they got they got used to staying at home and watching online yeah and some didn't watch it at all or they just watched it for a time yeah it's time to get back to a church somewhere amen and get plugged in That's not right. just attend church no but go there with a heart and say lord how do you want to use me in this church i'm not just saying our church i'm saying a church amen okay yeah. lord how do you want to use me do yeah. you want to be known is part of your legacy in your life just going to be attending church hmm. or is part of your legacy going to be 
part of being that that instrument that God used in that church to affect somebody for the kingdom of God. Mm. Maybe it's children's church. Maybe it's the old folks church. Maybe it's the singles ministry. Maybe it's the marriage ministry. Whatever it is, I don't know. Maybe you're going to do the parking lot. Maybe you're going to clean the toilets or scrape gum. I don't know. Maybe you're going to be worship. Maybe some of you are going to be a pastor someday and mm -hmm. teach God's word or a Bible study or something. You're going to lead something. Hmm. Whatever it may be, though, what is part of your legacy going to be? Did you just want to attend or did you want to be a part? Hmm. And so for some of you out there that are listening, it's time to get involved and get plugged in more so than you have hmm. in the past. Hmm. And so that should be your uh, your goal. Amen. It's a quite a good goal. Um, maybe we'll if we could work something out where they could uh, buy tracks on our website if they don't know where to get them, where can they sure. get them? Some yeah. people don't really know tracks, you know, the. New so, uh, so there's gospel, uh, gospel track, gospel planet track. Yeah. I've got it messed up. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we'll put it in the link in we'll the put description. It in the link, yeah. Yes. And then there's living waters, living waters got a lot of great tracks as well, but yeah, we have some, and that's probably a great idea. I think it would be and a we great idea. That. I think we got some gospel of John's. Anybody ever wants a cool gospel of John? It looks like a million dollar bill, <laughs> like a stack. Yeah. You guys just send us an email, man. We'll mail you one Ooh. freebie. Amen. That's yep. that's a good deal. Yep. Uh, Pastor Pete, would yes. you uh, like to pray the show out? And then I'll end. Okay. So, Father, we just come before you tonight, Lord God. We love you and we thank you for just another great evening, Lord. Uh, thank you for the one year that this uh, podcast mm. has been going, Lord. And it's going out there to who knows who's it going out to. I know that Nathaniel shared with me that we got a, a group of faithful followers out there in other countries that you guys mm. listen every week. Thank you for that, guys. Yeah. We hope we get gain more followers to listen uh locally as well as across the world, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I pray that you would use every part of this uh, podcast and venue to your glory, Lord. And so, Lord, I pray for all those out there that are maybe sick. Um, something's ailing you in your body. Maybe it's mental. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's physical, Lord. I would pray that you're, you're Jehovah Rapha, you're the healer. Pray that you would just come and touch those people right now that maybe have that going on, Lord. For some, mm -hmm. it's a, it's been a relationship that crushed you in one way, shape, or form. And uh, it's time to forgive and it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. Jesus loves you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Um, for some out there, that you've just been struggling mm -hmm. altogether, just been struggling. Maybe you're still dealing with addictions in some way, shape, or form. And we pray, Lord, that you would deliver those people um, from the bondage of mm -hmm. those addictions, Lord. Lord, I pray for all those that can hear my words from my mouth, Lord. Give us a hunger and thirst for your word and for righteousness, Lord. Matthew 6, 33, my dad's favorite verse. First, you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says, all these things will be added unto you. Hmm. Two requirements from us to seek your kingdom and your righteousness, Lord. So help us to be able to do that, Lord, faithfully. Yeah. And so, Lord, I pray that uh, we also, uh, for those of you that are out there that are listening, Lord, um, be a good steward of what God has given you. And take the resources that God has given you and sow it into the church that you're going to. Mm -hmm. Plug in and invest in God's kingdom. Yeah. It's something worthy to invest in. We invest in so many other things. So many drive throughs from different uh, restaurants and such. And, uh, and yet we can invest in the God's kingdom to um, sponsor a missionary or yeah. just you know give faithfully to a church to see what God will do with those resources to impact the kingdom of God. Yeah. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We pray that you would bind Satan by the blood of Jesus Christ, Father God. Mm. Lord, we thank you for that new movie that just came out, The Sound yes. of Freedom, Lord. Yes. I pray that, Father, more people would realize what's going on yeah. in this world, Lord, with sex trafficking against children, Lord. That's right. I pray you'd smash the plans of Satan in that, mm. Lord God. Mm -hmm. I pray that you would defeat him and yeah. smash his lies, Lord God. And yes. I pray that you would expose the evil that's going on yes. throughout this world, throughout the United States as we're one of the number one contributors yes. to this, Lord God, yes. that you would expose all the wickedness that's going on in dark places, Lord God, and that your light would shine forth, Father God, mm. and that these children would get delivered, Lord. Mm. So, Lord, we love you. We praise you. Bless uh, all those that attend our church, Lord God, and all the families, Lord, that are represented, those that uh, attend regularly and those that listen online. Bless them all, Lord God. Yes. And we pray that, Lord, you would just bless your church and you would do the addition. We love you. We thank you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, folks, this has been The Listenings, brought to you by Purpose of Heart Ministries. 
And if God has put it on your heart, and only if God's put it on your heart and you'd like to give a gift to uh, Purpose of Heart Ministries, yes. you can go to mypohm.com and uh, click on the donation. And Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. And uh, we love you, and we thank you for uh, watching our show. Yes. Please subscribe and like and share the show, and we would be uh, forever grateful. And uh, thank you for tuning in for one year. And so here's to another year. Yes. All right. God bless you guys. God bless you. And we are out.